The following is an exclusive presentation of Cablevision Local Programming, TV that's close to home. Hello everybody and welcome to Cablevision's Neighborhood Journal, a show about places to go, people to see, and things to do right here on Long Island. Hopefully you're having a fantastic 2011. The Journal crew is definitely ready to get out there and bring you all of this year's best local stories. So let's get started by doing just that. Now in our first story of the day, we bring you an organization that's steeped in history and tradition. This Nassau County group lives to serve the community in a very unique way. The Nassau County Firefighters Pipe and Drum Band was created in 1985 and has since continued to practice tradition, legacy, and pride. I've been with the band since the very beginning. When I was a little kid, I used to march in the Gardens Finney Parade with the Nassau County Police Department and always had the pipe band up front. So when some members of the Nassau County Fire Service decided they were going to put an Emerald Society together, I asked them if they were going to start a pipe band, to which they said yes, and I signed up. The band consists of firemen from all the Nassau County Fire Departments, and there are some people in the band that aren't in the Fire Department. It's just civilians and volunteer Fire Department members. There are 71 individual departments within Nassau County, but we make up members of quite a few of those departments, so we represent the entire Nassau County Fire Service. So what if you don't know a thing about music? We give lessons. You could be a complete beginner and we'll teach you from day one until you're ready to go on the street and play with us. We bring people in and explain to them exactly what it's all about because typically the washout rate is about 90 percent on the bagpipe especially because it takes about a year and a half on one of these which is a chanter before you ever actually get onto the bagpipe. Because the organization is made up entirely of volunteers, it relies on its annual fundraiser to help keep it running. The band holds many fundraisers to cover the pricey expenses for each person. Every new member, they get kilts and jackets and everything we need, about $1,500 a man, and it's very expensive to get this band uh, on the street and set up the way we need to be set up. A kilt, for example, is $400 because the wool has to come over from Scotland. You have to get someone to make it. Each person is fitted individually. Our members also buy their own equipment. So a set of bagpipes, which are paid for out of our own pockets, are well over $1,000. Bonding with loved ones keeps many members coming back and taking part. It's a great family, and my son's in the band, and so it's the one thing we do together weekly, no matter what. We have a great group of people here. Both my sons play. It's just a group that's been together for a very long time. We look forward to this fundraiser every year because we always try and add new tunes that we're practicing now that we're going to hopefully knock everybody's socks off. We want to have a good time with everybody. These people are supporting us all year long during parades. People are out watching us. So we want to give back a little bit too. It's a great party. It's a good time. Everyone has a lot of fun. For more information about the Pipes and Drums fundraiser, take a look at the information on your screen. Valentine's Day is right around the corner, so now is your time to express your true love by buying somebody something, preferably something sweet. And if you have absolutely no idea what you're doing yet, then don't worry, because in this segment of Journal Du Jour, we are going to give you some great ideas for a great Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is upon us, and what better place to visit than a bakery? We're about to prep you for some Valentine's fun, whether you have a sweetheart or you're riding solo. We're taking you inside a Taste of Home Bakery in North Belmore in this edition of Journal Du Jour. Taste of Home Bakery is a family-run business that started eight years ago because my sister here, my little sister, is extremely talented with baking. Clearly, it's a family thing here at A Taste of Home Bakery. You just met Monica Tarantino and her sister, Rose Fuger. According to them, Monica is the savvy businesswoman and Rose is the gifted chef. 
It leaves a lot of creativity. I can always change up something I do, and as I drive home, I try to think of a different product, something different that nobody else has yet. And um, it sort of lets me experiment a lot. A taste of home is what Monica calls a triple threat. The perfect combination of bakery, cafe, and sweet shop. We make everything from traditional bakery favorites, like layer cakes and charlotte russe and cupcakes, to things like rye bread and breads. But we also make ice cream and chocolate and popcorn, and we serve a full breakfast and lunch menu every day. And what about Valentine's Day? What can a taste of home offer to you and your sweetheart? We offer chocolate lollipops, chocolate-covered popcorn in heart shapes, boxes of chocolates, we'll make specialty cakes, brownie hearts. And the most important question, can I join the Taste of Home team? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We've got an apron all set aside for you with your name on it to sort of get you into the spirit. <laughs> so now we're behind the scenes at the bakery and Danielle already started making some chocolate-covered strawberries, which look delicious, by the way. These are items. one of the most popular ones. Actually, Especially starting... for Valentine's Day, who doesn't love chocolate covered strawberries? Yeah, so um, they, it actually kicks in right before football season. A lot of people like them for their football games. Really? Yeah, it's a healthy snack. Take note, man. <laughs> Get the chocolate covered strawberries for so. football season. You keep the wives nice and quiet. <laughs> oh, good. all my years practicing on all my cupcakes that I make. <laughs> I think we could use her at holiday time. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, you know what? Sure. Oh. Now this is my kind of cake. Because it's just throw in all the icing and make it look pretty. And here's the finished product. A happy Valentine's Day to you and your loved one. And if not, then just come to the bakery, get a cake, sit home, and eat it yourself. Can't get enough of all the sweet treats you saw today? For more information about a Taste of Home Bakery, take a look at the info on your screen. This next story truly is a special one. It's a story that one of our producers, Dan McManus, really wanted to tell about his grandmother's battle with Alzheimer's and how it affects her and her family. Dan brought us into his home to give us a very personal look at a day in the life of his beloved grandma. When I was seven, every night I came home to mom quickly cooking dinner and Oma carefully setting the table. Fifteen years later, Mom still cooks the dinner, but the family sets the table. Oma, now a year shy of 90, suffers from advanced stage Alzheimer's. Her short-term memory is all but gone, and what's left are brief glimpses of the past, often skewed by her own imagination. Even the memory of how to eat is slowly slipping, a skill she once took pride in. Oh, she was a very meticulous eater. She was very precise. Everything had to be the utmost with the manners and etiquette, and uh, the table had to be set a certain way. She would remain that way until 2003, when a minor stroke caused her mind to slowly deteriorate. No, we don't want to do that. How about this? How about you fold the napkins? After that, she that? rapidly lost her ability to speak English and she reverted back to German and everything was in German at that point. She still understood English, but she couldn't speak it anymore. And little by little from there on in, she started losing her mental capacity. She would go to the physical therapist and, and forget her way home, forget what her house looked like. The neighbors would find her in the street and have to walk her home to the house. Things started getting worse and worse as time went on. My family knew Oma needed a nurse, and with her lack of English, speaking German was a must. We advertised for a German-speaking home health uh, aid, and by a stroke of luck, we, we got one, and she is wonderful. And she's still with us today, and I don't know what we would do without her. 
she was like my best friend. I felt like, how could this be a job? I felt guilty for getting paid. She would go with me everywhere. We would go to the beach, we'd go shopping, we'd go to the mall. A stroke and recent heart attack has left Oma with 20% of a functioning heart. Even after these obstacles, her body is still in good physical shape. She's so strong and healthy. It's just her mind, it's just, it's a shame. Now she looks at you like, sometimes like, I have no idea what you're saying. Where she used to answer me and know my name at least, because I would tell her my name constantly. Now she, do, she doesn't say my name anymore. Was ist mein Name? Wollt ich nennen? Ich hab ich vergessen. It's okay. She used to be very vain, I have to say vain, and she would look in the mirror and she would love it and now she, I can't even get her. Every morning we used to look in the mirror and, and I say, Ruth, tell yourself you're one good looking woman. And she did it every morning, but she won't do it anymore now. Again, you are one good looking woman. At night, Alzheimer's patients become less responsive and more confused, more commonly referred to as sundowning. Susan works the evening shift, dealing with this daily, but the morning nurse Hedwig sees a completely different side of Oma. Good morning, come. Good morning. So come in. Langsam, langsam. So come in. So. Mal eben gucken, was deine Beine machen. Gibst du mir mal eben ein Bein? Ist du komm her. Mach mal das eine. Zack, zack. So, das schmeißen wir weg. Siehst du, da haben wir ja schon alles geschafft. Da sind wir schon mal fast auf, oder? Schnell können wir auch aus, aufsetzen. Guck mal, sind alle da. Was noch? Sollen wir mal kurz winken? Hallo, guten Morgen. <lacht> Morgens ist hier mal. in der Good Mood, ne? Ja. Ja, dann kriege ich auch immer ein paar Schläge. Dann geht's ihr besonders gut. <lacht> I, I think what makes her unique is that she's a happy Alzheimer person. She's especially in the morning, she's uh, happy and smiling. So if you can uh, be fairly happy and be fairly healthy and be around your family, I think you got it made, right Oma? Yeah. <lacht> she's special, can I say that? She is, she's special. I, I, I mean, I've had you know, people that didn't have Alzheimer's and I took care of them. But Ruth is special. Oh my God. So on the morning Journal will be back in just a minute. And as we go to break, listen to what Dan had to say about the story you just saw and why he felt it was so important to tell it. We'll be right back. I know that a lot of people are going through the same situation either on the island or throughout the United States or throughout the world really and um, it's really kind of an intriguing issue to, to deal with and I thought uh, sharing my story and her story really um, would be something cool to bring to journal. Debt Counseling Corporation is a nonprofit organization which helps consumers like you learn how to pay down their debt. Call us at 888-354-6332 to speak with one of our certified credit counselors free of charge and learn how to take the pain out of paying down your debt. Let us help you on your way to a brighter tomorrow. As a former county executive and lifelong resident, Pat Halpin knows what matters to Long Islanders. His accomplishments in economic development and environmental preservation have shown his commitment to his community. Pat's experience has taken him from Albany to Washington and Mineola to Riverhead, placing him on the forefront of our most important issues. As host of Cablevision's Meet the Leaders, Pat knows what questions to ask, so you get past the soundbite and get the real answers you deserve. Catch Meet the Leaders on Cablevision's local programming. Welcome back to Cablevision's Neighborhood Journal. Now, most of us have been suffering through these past couple frigid months. However, for residents of the town of Islip, the more snow and ice, the better. Take a look at how they actually enjoyed this freezing season.
Winter by the Bay is the town of Islip's annual holiday celebration. There's ice skating, sledding, arts and crafts, and a whole lot more. I think it's gotten to be more well known. A lot more people know about it. We send out flyers to all the elementary schools. I think word of mouth has really gotten around. With the weather this week, unfortunately, it kept some people away, but hopefully it brings some more people in. So in the previous episode of Journal, you saw our host, Joanna, make an attempt to ice skate. Well, I couldn't be there, but now I have a chance to do it. So I'm gonna show her how it's done. Nope, <laughs> I can't do this. First attempt, not so good. A little adjustment and, yeah, much better. I could not even walk. All right, attempt number two, we'll try this now. Whoa! Ah! It's way harder than it looks. It's only my second time doing this. And I think I'm still kicking Joanna's butt. Yeah, still no good. You were ice skating pretty well out there. How, how long you been ice skating? I'm all right, Not, nothing special. <laughs> I, you know, you, you, you were holding your own out there too. We read about it and uh, we heard they did it last year and we wanted to check it out this year. It's a, it's a great idea. It keeps, you know, something for the kids. It's, what else can you ask for? It'll keep the kids off the lake when it's not really frozen and keep them safe. You know, because I know when the ice is not real frozen on the lake, the kids like to go on and some of them fall through. So this is really a great thing the town of Islip is doing. All right, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. All right, Mission Ice Skate, fail. I'm done, I'm done. It's great. I know in the past they did it down at Bayshore Marina, but having it here close to home is great. It's a nice day out with the kids. We just came here to sled and, sled and ice skate around. It looks like a lot of fun. They have different things. And the slopes are really cool here. So. Yeah, they're really fast. I never went sledding before, so I decided to take advantage and have a go. Okay, too much outdoor fun. Indoors now. You guys saw me do some extreme sports outside earlier, but now I need to take a break and I'm not that good at that, but coloring is my thing. So what's the absolute best part? It's free! 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 Yes, you heard right folks. All these activities can be enjoyed at no cost to you, thanks to the wonderful people of this town. Let's face it, we all spend way too much money at Christmas time, and he thought, let's do something inexpensive and fun, and kids are off from school this week. The parents want to get them out of the house for a few hours, come on down here and have a good time with us. You're finally getting something, you know, you, you can see what, you know, what the town's doing. I mean, it's a great idea. It's great for the kids. I mean, you can see them out here, they're, they're having a ball. That's what it's all about, the kids. Uh, if Tanya wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with ice skating abilities, we can definitely do that. Roll the footage. I can't get this on. <laughs> get my big feet from here. Oh boy. Oh my god. Uh, all right, so I've pretty much proven to be useless on the ice. However, that is not the case for the girl in our next story. She's got Olympic gold on her mind and in her skates. Think she's got what it takes? Let's find out. Bronze medalist for Team USA in Czech Republic. Empire State Games gold medalist. New York State under 19 tier one champion. You might think this is the resume of a seasoned athlete, but it all applies to 17 year old Nicole Giannini. I've been playing hockey for five years. I was like the only girl and I started when I was 12. So I wasn't even in high school yet and I was playing on the high school team. I play everything except goalie. So it's basically wherever my coach needs me. But I'm mostly a offense. At age 12, Nicole toughened up by starting with the boys. It's kind of tough playing with the guys. Now you can definitely see it as they grow and girls stay the same. They get like a lot more stronger and everything. I broke my finger and it stopped. Uh, this boy took a slap shot and it hit me in the finger and it was like busted just like, <laughs> it was gross. No, but I got in a couple of fights with guys outside. Her father, Rick Giannino, reflects on her career, past to present. 
she moved away from home at 15, which was hard on her mom and I. And uh, you know, but she has a dream that she wants to uh, accomplish, and, and she gives it her all. She's not basically a normal kid. She's looking to achieve something, and she's on the right path, and, and she's got a tremendous work ethic to get there. There's not a lot of opportunities on Long Island, but with Charles Wong's program with the Lady Islanders, they're a growing thing for girls hockey, but we need more opportunities. That's one of the reasons why I went away is when I got the opportunity to go and get more development and take on more responsibility and just grow as a player. Even local officials are standing up and taking notice of Nicole's abilities. If she does make it to the Olympics, I'm sure the U.S. team will go far. We love to see our, our hometown heroes here, so I'm sure she'll have thousands of young ladies taking to the ice and playing hockey. At 17, Nicole's schedule is anything but average compared to her peers. I go to school at National Sports Academy, which is in Lake Placid. And a typical day is when you can wake up either 6, 7, 8 o'clock and then train until 11. School starts at 1 o'clock and ends at 6.15. And you have a little free time until 8 and then lights out at 10. And then you wake up the next day and it all starts again. And as far as Nicole's future goes... Especially with Nicole, I always tell us, it's my job to create the opportunities, it's your job to create the outcome. So without the opportunities, you can't get the outcome. So she takes advantage of it. I think I have to play hockey every day. It's just something I... It's like my passion. I'm sorry. We have to take a quick break, but do not go anywhere, because coming up next... Beth Page punts, passes, and scores for a great cause. Remember, you can watch Neighborhood Journal whenever you want using video on demand. Simply go to channel 502, select News and World, then Local On Demand, choose Long Island, and enjoy the show anytime. Green, green, green. It's your home, it's your dream. Making it green starts from the ground up, so make sure the air in your home is healthy for your family to breathe. Test your home for the presence of radon. Go to epa.gov slash radon. Make it green, green, green. For the millions living with COPD, breathing becomes a struggle. COPD is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. You may have heard of it as chronic bronchitis or emphysema. Over time, you feel like you're breathing through a straw. It's the fourth leading cause of death in the U.S., and it took my grandmother. If you're over 35 and have ever smoked, you could be at risk. Good news is, you can improve your symptoms. I'm Danica Patrick, and I drive for COPD. Join the movement at driveforcopd.com. Take our screening questionnaire today and talk to your doctor. Welcome back to Cablevision's Neighborhood Journal. Now the holiday rush is through and most of us are wondering how our wallets are ever going to recover. However, for the needy families of Long Island, that worry won't be necessary, thanks to some hard work and generosity in Huntington. In Huntington, the Family Service League and the Tri-Community and Youth Agency joined together in an effort they'd like to call Project Toy. We realize that a lot of our families do struggle at the holiday time, so along with Family Service League, we started this program to empower parents to pick for their own children. Project Toy allows parents who are financially struggling the opportunity to be a part of the gift giving process by having them pick their own child's gifts. It's important for us to include the families in this program. Parents can freely pick among 6,000 new donated toys. Everything is free. They can take whatever they want up to the number of toys that's on their cart. It's so wonderful to have so many caring, community-minded people who really want to help and they sometimes don't know how to do that. So this time of year is so great. It gives them such an opportunity to be able to give back to the community. Everyone in here who's wrapping is a volunteer and they wrap the gifts and the families are allowed to take two stocking stuffers and every family gets a book. One volunteer who has personally benefited from these organizations is now giving back. 
I'm glad I'm able to come here and everybody's so loving and giving. What you give is what you get back to and I'm, that's what I've learned and I noticed and it's, and it's just awesome. We have a lot of toys but there's certainly a lot of demand. We're hoping to be able to serve as many as we possibly can here in Huntington. Project Toy has distributed toys to over 1,400 families in a dignified and personal way. The journal now takes you to Beth Page, where a game of flag football has never been so meaningful. Take a look at the unique way that Long Islanders raised money for the less fortunate this past holiday season. A bunch of guys on Long Island coming together for a friendly game of flag football on a Sunday morning. Doesn't seem like anything special, nothing too noteworthy. But this particular bunch of guys and this particular game are anything but ordinary. We raise money for needy families and, and people who really care and want to be here are here. And they're here for the right reasons. That's Gary Breton. He's the founder of the Breton's Benefit Bowl, a football tournament dedicated to raising money for families in need in Beth Page. Gary started the bowl 23 years ago through the Beth Page Community Foundation. Oh, I feel great about the players. I feel great about our board on the Beth Page Community Foundation. These guys are all great. They want to be here, and we hooked up with the Nassau County Flag Football League, and we make it a big event. Do people ever get down and dirty here? Is it always friendly? Oh, it gets down and dirty. We try to keep it friendly. That We have nine refs who volunteer all their time every year, so they keep the game in check. Yes, referees were on hand to officiate the games, but also to reflect on the purpose of this event, and the hundreds of families it's helped over the years. Oh, I think it's absolutely great. You know, there are, especially in an economic times like this, where there are so many families that are really need help that can't pay their electric bills, can't pay their fuel bills, that something like this does so much for those people. It's a way of giving back, you know. God's been good to me, and uh, you know, it's my way. And what about the players? What was their strategy for the day's competition? Win. <laughs> and raise one, and raise one. For a lot of us, uh, we actually grew up watching our fathers play in this game. And uh, from that standpoint, you know, it's something you look forward to as a kid to get that shot, you know, when you get old enough to come out here and play. And it's just pretty much continuing tradition of uh, what we always do. That's play football and help out of town. And it's, uh, it's fantastic. Around twenty-five to $30,000 is expected to be raised at this event. Community leaders have certainly seen what a difference that money makes. Several families from our congregation have received benefits from the Beth Page Community Foundation, so it's made a huge difference. Gratitude, in awe, because these people can't pay their rent, they can't pay their oil bills, they can't pay their mortgage, and so it's uh, tremendous, it really is. There is just a great feeling about this game. People come together to help others uh, through some trying times. Thank you for the people in Beth Page. I do the work here, but. They send the message by donating and, and doing the right thing for the town of Beth Page. That's going to do it for this chapter in our Neighborhood Journal. Remember, the Journal crew is ready to cover any story at any time, so email us at journalli at cablevision.com with all your story ideas. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Paradise and put up a parking lot with a pink hotel, a boutique, and a swinging hot spot. Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone? It'd be a paradise and put up a parking lot.
As a former county executive and lifelong resident, Pat Halpin knows what matters to Long Islanders. His accomplishments in economic development and environmental preservation have shown his commitment to his community. Pat's experience has taken him from Albany to Washington and Mineola to Riverhead, placing him on the forefront of our most important issues. As host of Cablevision's Meet the Leaders, Pat knows what questions to ask, so you get past the soundbite and get the real answers you deserve. Catch Meet the Leaders on Cablevision's local programming. I'm Matt Long. I'm a New York firefighter, a blood donor, and a blood recipient. Several years ago, I was injured and needed blood to stay alive. Give the gift of life. Give blood. You might get it back someday. Visit nybloodcenter.org or call 1-800-933-BLOOD.